Well, today this is going to be a little bit different. So here's some titanium white, some blue. Of course, I'm using acrylics today. A little bit of red. Titanium white, blue, red. Now, that's a little bright, but you know what? It's acrylic, so it does dry out a little darker. I'm going to do a cityscape, obviously. That's no surprise to you. You clicked on the thumbnail, so clearly you were interested in watching a city painting. And um, this is something that I've done one other time that I remember. And it, oh, it was years ago, maybe like eight or so years ago. It's been a very long time. But I'm going to do a city painting just for fun. Well, not only just for fun. This was actually a, uh, a recommendation from one of my Patreon members. So if you're not on Patreon, you're missing out. We're having a lot of fun. We actually just got done doing a critique where people sent in their paintings and I did a video where I just explained how to improve the paintings. It was a lot of fun. So if you'd like to do stuff like that, as well as you know live streams and, and full lessons, definitely check it out. All right, here's some white. Although this is a um, nighttime scene, I don't want it to be overly dark. I do want it dark, but I don't want it like crazy dark. So I'm gonna put in that real pretty moon, just like that. So let me let me get the sky in. I don't think it's gonna take long. We're gonna do a river, so we might as well plan for that. Now we'll repeat a similar process right down here in the water. Not too bright, very similar. <laughs> There's just a lot of water in the paint so that it flows. Of course, you can use your foundation medium. We'll be getting some of that out later. I just haven't got it out yet. There we go. So nice and horizontal flat strokes so that the water looks proper. I'll tell you, it's sometimes the little things that count. Now, where's your horizon going to be? Well, mine's close to the middle, really. Maybe just a little below middle. That's fine. You do yours wherever you like. And let me see. Yeah, that's looking pretty, pretty good. I think I'm going to go a little darker. I may need to go two coats because I added so much water. I probably added too much water. That's part of acrylic painting, but I did want it to have a nice soft blend. One thing that's great about acrylics, though, is once they dry, you can just go right back over them and reapply your paint and let that coat that you just laid down. So in other words, let this coat just shine through and it's totally OK. Now, the next thing I want to do is paint in my moon. I'm going to mix up just a some sort of a color, just a yellow, because I can actually put yellow. Uh, I'm not going to push it. Maybe I'll put a little red in that yellow, but I can put yellow over my blue because my blue is dry. Of course, because of dry brush blending, you still could get green, but it's less likely. And like I said, put that red in there. So let's, let's just see what happens. Let's see. Now, if you really wanted a yellow moon over a blue sky, you could paint that moon in white first, let it dry, and then paint yellow on top. That would work. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> All right. Now, in case you're curious, I've got a 12 by 24. 12 by 24. Nice and long. I, I just thought this was a great excuse to use this canvas uh, a while back. This is just a cheap art store canvas. Nothing special at all. Quite a while back, um, a couple months ago, I want a fairly large moon, like something you're looking through a telephoto lens, you know, not, not just a little itty bitty moon. That, that's a tiny little moon. But something like a telephoto lens, that moon is going to be bigger. That, that's that kind of look. There we go. And I'm just dry brushing it in. Sometimes when I'm painting oils, I'll just set my brush down there and rotate it. But today I'm just going to go in a circle and dry brush this, this in so that I have a softer glowing edge. Honestly, in some ways, I'm just painting the, the glow itself. So now I've given this just a minute to dry, and that's really all it took was a minute. And I've got the about the same color mixed up here, just mixed up more of it. And uh, right in here, let's just go ahead and paint us our moon shape. You know what? I almost want to see a little more yellow in it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going crazy here on this one today, but I want to see just a little bit more yellow in that moon. This is a cityscape. If there's ever a time where I can get to do something fun, this is it. You know, different, abnormal <laughs> for me. There we go. So that's it. I think I see yellow moons all the time. Not all the time, but every once in a while you see a big old yellow moon. You can't tell me they don't exist. There we go. We'll just fill this in. Of course, you know, a moon this big, we're going to want some amount of craters in it. Maybe we'll just get craters automatically just by, see, just by smudging and allowing some of that blue to show through. Now, let me take some, some black, really, some maybe just a little sap green, not much, some red, some blue, kind of make a color that's dark, but it has color in it. It's not just one flat, dead color. It's not just black 
right out of the tube. Now, I'm going to use this to rub a line pretty firmly, straight, it's sort of straight, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight because this shoreline is not gonna be perfectly straight. And I'm just getting this established. You see, we're gonna do a river. This is a river and, um, and then we'll have some amount of vegetation, some trees growing along the river. Now we should probably talk about where this even comes from. You know, where did I get this idea? Because surely I'm not just making it up. Well, that's true. You know, I think it would be kind of hard to just make up a city painting. So what I did was I looked at several photos of Nashville. Just happens to be close by. I figured, well, might as well, if I'm just going to pick a random city, might as well be Nashville. And, uh, and it's got the Cumberland. So this is actually the Cumberland River. And I am not copying Nashville exactly, but I'm using Nashville as a rough just a basic rough guide. I'm going to put that bridge in. I'm going to put some of the buildings where they belong and I'm going to remove some of the buildings I don't like. I'm also going to add some. So again, it's not, I'm not copying it exactly. So this, this is no real city, but it is based on Nashville. It's definitely the Cumberland River. Oh, it makes me want to go fishing. And there you go. And don't forget to continually mist your painting. Or you're not your painting, your paint. Don't mist your painting. <laughs> just the paint. All right, I've got a, just a soft purple color. And I'm going to create some clouds. You can see I've left several brush marks behind and you wouldn't want to do that. You would want to go ahead and paint those out, make sure you have those all blended out before the sky dries. But uh, it doesn't matter today because I did anticipate painting some clouds. Now that color is perfect right there, but acrylics dry one shade darker. And so when that dries a shade darker, it's going to be too dark. So I'm going to lighten that up one shade. Okay. And add just a little bit of water so that it's softer. Of creamier. Yes, yeah, it's already drying and I'm already starting to lose it. I'm going to go just a little brighter with it. There we go. That's it. So that when it does dry, it'll be exactly what I want it to be. Now these paints are water-based acrylic and I've got absolutely no problem getting my finger in there and using that as a blender to smudge everything. I think it's, it makes for a great brush and it doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> Bring that cloud just down and around. I think that's kind of pretty. I don't think we need to go crazy with it. Just, just something like that. It's simple. I like my, this is my custom taper round. This is a, a, oh, one of my favorite brushes by far in both lines, you know, oil and acrylic. This is one of my favorites. Of course, it's hard to beat just a classic old filbert brush because you can get so much done with it. But when it comes to, when it comes to, to specialty brushes, this is my favorite I've ever used. If you haven't ever painted with one, you're missing out. It's kind of hard to describe it. You got to get it in your hand to see why it's so different. It's, it, you don't use the point of the brush. You use the side of the brush. These are available on the website if you need them. Yeah, it's totally, it, it's cut. Like the, this bristle stops down here. And then, so the, it's like a cone and, and you just use the side of the brush. Totally different. Totally different from normal brushes. All right. Now, up here, of course, the sky is dry. I think I'm going to put in a couple of stars. Now, in real life, would you see stars? No, you would not. I'm admitting that right now. So just so we all know you would not see stars. If you don't want to see stars in your painting, you don't have to put them up here. In my sky, for my painting, I want to have just a few because I think it'll, I think it'll add something in my opinion. So I don't want to see any comments about how you wouldn't see stars because of all the other light. <laughs> there we go. All right. I'm going to put one there. Boom. Again, if you don't want them, don't put them in, please. <laughs> you know, there we go. Just dot around a few stars. Why? Because to me, nothing reads nighttime scene like just a couple of stars. Just a couple. I see a couple right over here as well. And I'm just going to block them with my finger in order to sort of, yeah, oh, they dry so quickly. But yeah, that just boom, to me makes a difference. Now, up to this point, I've been just freehanding a quick sketch, just trying to get my buildings laid out again, based on Nashville, but not anything, not a copy. I don't even I don't, I'm sure you couldn't figure out all oh, this doesn't exactly look like Nashville anymore. But, you know, I want to reflect these down into the river. So I decided I just grabbed here a straight edge. You can use ruler or something. And I think the best way to go about this is to use the straight edge. And I may do this to refine some of my buildings when I go to paint them. But as I draw, as I sketch here, I think it would be worthwhile just just indicating a little bit of this reflection, you know, down here in the water, roughly the same height as the object above it. Just, I don't want a sharp reflection, but I just want to just enough where, okay, yeah, there we go. 
So anyway, I'm just going to come along and do this. The straight edge is good. I think it just helped me paint a little faster, paint a little bit more accurately. I don't have to sketch all of this. I just, I'm just going to do a little, just to kind of show, okay, there is something here. And I'll probably just fill the rest in on my own with color when we actually go to, you know, do the rest of the painting. But, you know, you could just as well use your straight edge and come up here and outline the buildings. This one in particular, you know, is tilted. I can see it tilted. So let me get that straight edge on it. Check this out. And just by using a straight edge, I can help pull that building out just a little bit. Well, kind of blobbed up there. So I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. But I just figured, you know, I think a drier brush will, it won't at least, yeah, there we go, won't leak under as badly. I'm no expert at cityscape paintings here. Now I'm going to take some red, some blue, some of our black as well. Just a real dark color, but not totally black. The red in it, I think, is, is nice, you know. It's kind of up to you. It doesn't even have to be pure black. Maybe uh, let's, let's lighten that with some white so that we've got something other than just totally solid black. That way you can go darker if you need to. But I'm going to get just the form of these buildings in. Okay, so we'll just shape them. I mean, they're already kind of well established, but I just want to get that that look going of some of that shadow. It's not critical to paint over the entire thing. You can let some of that underpainting, see it's just that blue tone, you can let that show through. It's not going to hurt anything. You can also let your sketch show through. It'll look like a highlight. The light is coming from... Um, everywhere, really. We've got so much light produced from each building that there is no real highlight and shadow side to any of this. Doesn't make any difference about the moon. It's just everything has got so much light, you know. And then a lot of that light will be reflected. We're going to have a, a very bright, there's a street or, and street lights right down here. So along this horizon, it's going to be very bright. We haven't done that yet. We're just, just getting around to it in a little bit. Let's see there building. Get that in. Anyway, just my darks. And I don't want everything in this dark. I'm probably going to go ahead and underpaint some, um, such as, you know, these buildings here with a little bit more of a golden color. We'll see. But you know what? It wouldn't hurt. Yeah, maybe, maybe put, I'm not an expert here. So, you know, you may know a better way to go about this, but I may just go ahead and underpaint all of this dark. I don't typically do that, but but I may, in this particular instance, underpaint more of it dark than I would normally. Now I'm assuming this is going to be the most exciting part of the painting, getting these colors of the windows in. There's my paint, by the way. I took my palette and I scraped off and cleaned my palette a little while ago, and that helps because now we're going into the fine details. And you don't want that mess on the palette. At least I don't want the mess on the palette. It's, of course, it's everything here. It's just a, it's an opinion. There are very few facts when it comes to painting. I'd say the only fact, one of the only few facts that there are when it comes to painting is uh, it's very hard to mix the color red. <laughs> That's a fact. It's hard to mix the color red. There. Everything else is pretty much opinion, isn't it? There we go. Look at that. Now, maybe we want some windows on this side, so I'll just come through and slice in some of these little shots of light. I don't know that, you know, this is just, this is just the beginning to me. Just the beginning. I'm looking over at my, at the photograph of Nashville that I'm at least, you know, so I've got something to look at. And I notice a lot of these buildings have uh, adjoining continuous lights here. Now, once I get this on and it dries, then I'll come back and I'll add the glow. The window goes down first, then the glow comes in afterward when you're acrylic painting. At least that's the way I like to do it. And you'll notice you say, well, if, if you're familiar with Nashville, you go, where's the bat building? I took it out. <laughs> well, I did not want to paint the bat building. If you do Nashville, you can put, you can put it in yours. <laughs> uh, there we go. I knew somebody was going to ask me where that thing was. There we go. All right, let's just keep on going. I'm just going to continue. You know, I think these actually need to be a little closer together. Some of those lights. I don't know. I'm going to play with it until I get it the way that I like it. Now I've got this gray 
And using the gray, I am I'm just cleaning up now all of the windows. So I put the windows and I'm only doing I'm only doing a small section. I figure I might as well learn and make my mistakes here before I repeat it throughout the whole uh, entire area. So, you know, I put down a bunch of this blobby color and it's rounded. Obviously, we don't want round as much as possible. We don't want round. So now I'm coming in now that it's dry. Of course, it only takes about a minute to dry because it's such a small layer of paint. Now I come in not with black, but with a gray. And using that gray, I can just just begin to uh, carve these windows out. Boom, just like that. You know, it's uh, as far as, you know, how far do you go with it? Well, as, as far as you want to when you are painting. I don't think there's any set, well, you've got to be this accurate. You know, I've seen city paintings that are honestly sloppy, not in a bad, not in a bad way, but that's what I would call them. It's kind of sloppy. And, uh, and that could be what you're looking for, kind of impressionistic, or you want it to be really detailed or whatever. I have no idea where this is going to land. It's not going to be perfect because I'm using brushes, you know, with hair, not like a one hair brush, but, but I'm using fairly large brushes, even the smallest brush that I have here. A micro filbert brush you know it's still not that small when you're doing very tiny details i mean look at the, you know it's just not that big and so how far i'm going to take this i haven't really decided yet but i do know this that i can layer layer upon layer in order to create the effect that i want and um speaking of the effect that i want is that well yeah it's all right I'll just keep going and see where we come to here in a minute. I don't know. Let's see, I can just continually go over that. And then you can add subtle colors like a, like a, like a soft pink here, just to, just to begin to show color on the building, not just black. I think the acrylics is definitely the easier way to go because I'm able to put my hand down on it and rest and, and get more accurate brush strokes. You know, you got all kinds of options, but I'm happy using the acrylics to get this done. There we go. Just adding a little bit of city street lights, you know, cars and, and low lying uh, just stuff here along along the bank of the river. And then, as you can see, it'll stop right about there because this side of the city has got a power outage problem. OK, I guess we're done with the painting. <laughs> we, really, we should, <laughs> but we're not going to. We're just going to. Uh, we're just going to keep plugging along and, and get it done. Just little bit by little bit. This is kind of a tedious little process, isn't it? If you'd like to see the entire thing, I'll have the full version of this over on Patreon. You can sign up there and uh, if you're interested in that. But it's a uh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I didn't realize I kind of forgot. I don't know. It's been a long time. Maybe I'll put if I can find it, uh, an image of the, the one and only other cityscape I did. And uh, you'll see uh, it's, it's quite a bit different. Let's go ahead and start down here. Maybe I'll do the, at this time. I'll do the, the street lights down here first. Maybe. Maybe I'll do those street lights first. And uh, yeah, I kind of like this being the, the brightest area right here. I don't know. I'm just playing around in case you <laughs> In case you can't tell, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but I'm just playing around, having fun. Just having fun. Boom, 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 boom. Little. You know, we can even add some glow here. Maybe I should put the glow on these buildings before I put the windows in. I don't know. I'm playing around. I'm learning. I'm just learning here. Having fun, playing around. Creating these different, different effects. See, it's important to, to, to push yourself and to do things you're not comfortable with every once in a while. Maybe not too often, but every once in a while. I believe that it, it'll add something to your painting journey and experience. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way over here even. All the way off. I don't, I don't want it as bright over here just be, for the sake of the painting itself. But of course, in a city, this would be also just as much city lights over here as it is over there, clearly. But for the sake of the painting, you know, you take it as far as you'd like. I'm just creating that glow again, just that glow. 
sometimes oh it's a little brighter there you know okay well that's fine leave it a little brighter and you'll come up with a reason for it to be brighter later maybe there's a, a, a building there or something you know or, or some extra lights i don't know it doesn't matter come up with a reason later well now i'm going to go ahead and reflect um just basically here in the water whatever i've done above very simply uh, again basic it's not going to be crazy i'm going to pull in a downward fashion with my of course my tapered round brush what, what better brush is there to do something like this so i'm just going to pull straight down just beginning here at the shoreline and pulling downward i do have a wet paper towel here a damp paper towel just if i need to erase anything i can just rub it away and just soften it very delicate. I don't want to rub through in case that paint's not totally cured yet. Just delicately. So anyway, there you go. So some downward motion, some side to side, just whatever you want to do that gets it done, right? Good, good, good. There, is this perfect? No, this is not perfect. You know, I'm, I'm just playing around today. It's not perfect. It doesn't need to be for me to be happy with it. There you go. I'm just going to replicate color. You know, if I've got pink here, I'll, I'll pull pink down here. If I've got a little more yellow or orange tones, I'll, I'll also reflect those. And then if I make something kind of big, I'm like, well, you know, if I didn't want to erase it and I made something kind of big, well, maybe I'll pull that a little brighter up there. You see that? So, uh, you know, play around with it. And then it's important that you use that foundation medium in your paint. And it helps kind of lock in your layers even more, makes it more durable. I've pretty well got the reflection wrapped up. This is dry, very, very, very subtle. You could meticulously reflect this city perfectly down into, hold on, I see something I, I wanna add, <laughs> down into the water if you wanted to. You know, you really could. You could go, you could go crazy and add every last window in just opposite and make it just like a mirror, a glass reflection. You could do that if you wanted to. I just see a little light right there from that, some of that a lot of blue in that building there. A little blue in that building. Just, just sprinkling and scattering the light there. Yeah, the rest of it's okay. Okay. But I'm, I don't want to do that. I just don't, it's not, it doesn't sound like fun to me. So I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a ripple in the water. There's a little wind that kicked up. There's a little storm brewing here. You can see it. So of course, there's going to be a little chop on the water. The only time this river is real flat sometimes it's like a glass you know perfect reflection but only when it's real calm and it's clearly not calm sometimes you can actually get away with less is more and have a better painting out of it sometimes it's the stuff you don't do there we go well, it just totally depends it's up to you try it both ways if you want to you know when we when we see your version you know, I'd love to see how far you take that reflection. Maybe take it further than I did. You can actually take some dark purple and thin that down really good. Thin it down so it's runny. Okay, so I got thin down dark purple. And I'm going to create a chop on the water with that thin dark purple. See that? And that just creates a little, again, a little movement on the water. Well, that wraps things up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. It was certainly different and I enjoyed the experience. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, Brushline, and of course, Patreon. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.